Welcome to Peace Beyond the Pulpit. We're your hosts, Vicar William Dale Rowland. And DCE Kim Austin. We're bringing Sunday morning concepts into the Monday to Saturday realities. We'll be talking about the things you want to hear as disciples of Jesus Christ. Your burning questions about theology and doctrine. How we should respond to what's happening in the news. And what happens when real discipleship meets real world application. This is Peace Beyond the Pulpit. How you doing today? I'm hanging in there. Yeah? Yeah. Doing all right? All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How about you? Same. 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 Yeah. Busy getting getting into the schoolwork uh, routine again is mm. always something you have to figure out. Yeah. But uh, happy to be doing it. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. That's exciting. How was... Uh, so we're recording on Monday today. Yep. So how was, how was your worship? How was your Bible study yesterday? Um, yeah. Well, I was on a retreat all weekend with middle schoolers. Yeah. So I was actually um, surprised to see y'all because I thought you were coming back during, <laughs> during oh, that time, yes. and then you were you were there by the time we got to lunchtime, right? Yeah, we had we had planned to be back by eleven o'clock worship, okay. so nice. so that was nice. Um, but I thought it was also a cool segue to kind of end our retreat. You yeah, know, absolutely. That it allowed us to kind of come back and worship with our families, and then go home, and they can share about their experience with their. With their parents. Love it. Yeah. That's fantastic. So it, was cool. it was good. All right. So um, today uh, we talked about it and we're going to talk about church and state. Yep. yep. So really light topics uh, <laughs> for, yeah. for your Wednesday. Yeah. Um, but but just in, in looking in the news and there's just more and more stuff that seems to be battling with that tension. Yeah. And I want to figure out, you know, as disciples, what are, like, what are we supposed to be doing? Right. Um, which I think is the question people always have, and, mm-hmm. and people usually have one response or the other is yeah. it's uh, no complete separation of church and state, mm-hmm. or it's no um, church should drive all politics and government. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and there's, you know, there's this middle ground that, that, that I think we're actually called to live in. Yeah. So we're, we'll talk about that a little bit and, yeah. and figure out, well, should we be one, more one way than the other mm-hmm. and all of that? Yeah. So... What what yeah. are you what are your thoughts right off the bat? Let's just yeah. Well, I think figure out where to start. <laughs> um, I think right off the bat, a lot of times when I think about this topic, it just kind of um, is overwhelming and discouraging. Yeah, and and it the point that I get to a lot is what can me one single person do mm. to influence or change something that is so yeah large and convoluted and complex. Yeah. Um, and then I just get stuck there. Right. Yeah, because absolutely. my answer is I really don't know. Yeah. I really don't know other than, um, you know, just kind of befriending a neighbor or, you know, for me, one of the things that's really been laid on my heart is just like involved, being involved in my kid's school mm. and, and just little things that. like that. I get that. Um, but that's kind of, that's kind of where I go. What about you? Well, so when I'm very similar to Ryan, uh, if you don't yeah. know, that's, that's Kim's husband. Uh, and I'm but, very opposite from him, yeah. which is probably I'm, why God put I'm us very, together. so there's, for me, um, there can be a data overload. Yeah. Of uh, there's so many different articles to read, mm-hmm. and there's so many different different ways that you could um, reason your way into one of those two main camps yeah. of separation of church and state, and absolutely buying in. No church mm-hmm. should control should control it all. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's really easy to to have conversations with different people and, and go one way or the other. Mm-hmm. Um, when, um, yeah, I, I, that's where the data overload kind of happens. Right. Right. <laughs> and it's like, well, I, yeah, what well, on this is, I could go this way, but on this, I could go right. this way. And right. And there's yeah. never a perfect option. Yes. Right. There's never really an option that you feel like you win all the way around. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or that you could even, Make people happy, and that's yeah. that's not necessarily yeah. our job, but our job is to share the gospel, right? Um, so when do we get in the way of ourselves mm-hmm. in trying to do that, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, so uh, I thought we'd start with a little bit of a historical reference, yes. um, and this is just 
a few things that I've kind of learned and and kind of general statements about what I know about history. Mm-hmm. I'm not a historian, but but what I know about history and uh, the way that church and state has played out mm-hmm. in history. Mm-hmm. So there's there's all the way back to like uh, like Constantine, yeah, Emperor Constantine, um, which he you know many people know he was not a Christian, mm-hmm. and then he was, but he didn't declare it as the state's religion until almost right before his death. Okay, uh, that he that he declared it the uh, the official religion of Rome, mm-hmm. and that's when you know that's when that's when the church really spread is when he did that. Um, but we also see a lot of negative <laughs> impact that that had yeah. uh, within the Roman Empire. So it's uh, there's a few different things: uh, divine rights of monarchies Mm -hmm. uh, for hundreds of years, Mm -hmm. hundreds of years uh, when a king or queen took power, it was seen as, as a God given right. Yeah. No matter how they got it, Mm. (laughs) which, which I say that to open the door to, well, no, there were people that, no, they, they killed other people in order to get that. So is that divine, right? Yeah. Or is and this and this is kind of a question that I think you you kind of brought up of uh, of kind of honoring yeah. the leader yeah. still, uh, but uh, mm-hmm. yeah. So however they got it, it was divine right, and uh, when they spoke, it was God speaking. Yeah, mm. which is again really really hairy territory. Yeah, uh, and then uh, around the time of the Reformation, I think you know in the Lutheran Church we really understand this. <laughs> we, like we have a good, yeah. a good grasp on that time period, but uh, papal control of countries yeah. was a real thing all across Europe. Um, I don't know about outside of Europe, but I know across Europe, mm-hmm. uh, papal control of of uh, monarchies was a real thing. Uh, the Pope would uh, withhold uh, forgiveness, would withhold mm. uh, different things in order to um, get a leader to do what they wanted. Yeah, essentially being able to control whole countries by controlling that leader, yeah. that 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 monarch, um, and then it's so throughout history. What what I kind of I, and I took a note as I was writing this as I was writing this all down is uh, throughout history it's either the church controls the government mm-hmm. um, to the demise of both mm. um, because people um, either get offended by the church and they throw out both the government and the church Mm -hmm. or uh, the government ends up controlling the church and changing what the church does. Um, When the two try to come together, when they're, when they try to have church and church and state Mm -hmm. in one like uh, governing body. Right. So, yeah. So it sounds like neither option is a perfect system. Exactly. Right. Exactly. And I, you know, (laughs) Not to simplify it, but sometimes I just have to kind of break things down really simply in my own brain to grasp it. Um, At the end of the day, all government systems, no matter who's controlling them, are run by sinful people. Yes. And so they're going to be influenced and tempted by um, people, Mm -hmm. by spiritual forces, by everything. Um, You know, I mean, there's, there's just no way to have a perfect leader. Yeah. Right. Or or a perfect government. As much right. as we love our country. Yeah. Um, there's still there is no perfect government. Right. Like there <laughs> right. the only perfection uh with with leadership and, and I think nationhood would be the kingdom of God. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean that's yeah. really <laughs> that's really what we're talking about here. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So uh so some things uh some things that we that we've seen topic wise uh, that have come out these repetitive conversations. Mm-hmm. So some of this is going to seem like you've heard it before. It's because no, it's a conversation. That's, these yeah. are conversations that have been going on for for decades, mm-hmm. uh, right? So stuff like uh, same sex marriage, mm-hmm. um, kind of the new new thing over the past ten fifteen years. Mm-hmm. Religious freedom, yeah, is is kind of the buzz buzzword around um, the rights of Christians. Essentially, mm-hmm. um, IVF ruling in Alabama has just happened, yeah. and and the idea of that is kind of a 
essentially a government trying to marry church and state mm, mm-hmm. uh, in many different ways. Uh, abortion. I know there, there's been a ruling one way. There's now been that was overturned. So there's essentially been a ruling the other way. The likelihood in our lifetime of this continuing to go back and forth, I think, is very. Is uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It it's going to continue to be yeah to be prevalent. Yeah. And then there's uh, there's always you, you mentioned earlier as we were kind of thinking through this war mm-hmm. is always going to be a contentious topic. Mm-hmm. Um, should we go to war? Um, should we should we force people to fight in war? Yeah, I think is is something that our country has been through with the draft. Mm-hmm. Um, should, yeah, should Christians ever kill yeah. someone else right. in that war setting? Uh, and then, uh, border control. Yeah. Um, uh, so controlling your border versus humanitarian and mm-hmm. philanthropic mm-hmm. <laughs> type ideas. Mm-hmm. Uh, how do we, how do we figure that out? Mm-hmm. And then I think, I, I think there's just so many things that are going to come up yeah. <laughs> even, even beyond that. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a lot. Yeah, it right? is a lot. And and I think um given access to as many sources as we have today, I think there's going to be just continued confusion and data overload. Yeah. Um because there are so many places that you can find information. Mm. Right? And so with that, especially um, online, it's what's credible, what's not credible. Oh yeah. What's the what's the motivator behind maybe some of these? You know, just yeah. really sifting through all of that to just say, okay, what are the actual facts of said situation, or what are the actual piece? You know, what are the actual pieces that are being discussed or or argued about or mm-hmm. whatnot? Um, I think that's only going to continue to just get more and more confusing yeah and that's you know i i was i always had a hard time with the with the phrase fake news oh uh because for me it was either news or it was lies yeah and it can be really hard to as you said sift through the lies because they're just everybody's coming from their own angle right um and giving you the things that they want to give you the information they want to give you in order to Mm -hmm. sway you to their side of thinking Mm mm-hmm um, and I think it's really scary to read the other angle, whatever that angle may be. Yeah. Um, but I think it's necessary. Yeah. Right. To be able to get a full picture of what's going on, whether it's um, trustworthy or not, mm-hmm. you know, but that can be scary to yeah. <laughs> open yourself up to another way of thinking. Yeah. Right. Can you allow yourself to be swayed? Mm-hmm. Um because or is your stance mm-hmm. becoming the most important thing? Right. Yeah. Which I think is, I think is where we can falter as mm-hmm. disciples. Right. Mm-hmm. Is is when we figure out our stance and then we stick to it. Yeah. With nothing able to sway us, including our own conscience. Yeah. In some cases. Yeah. Well, no, I've already told people that's my stance, so I'm gonna I'm gonna stick to it and right. I'm gonna defend it. I'm going to share the articles that Mm -hmm. also defend it, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Um, Which is where we, you know, which is where we've gotten into trouble in the last however many years. Yeah, right. (laughs) Of of finding those news outlets that Mm -hmm. that really speak to it, and then not allowing ourselves to right say, oh, you know what, I may have had this wrong. Yeah, or this article may have had it wrong, but I didn't, you know, do my due diligence and fact checking or yeah, whatnot, and yeah. So how do you um, how do you kind of because we've had um, cases of people breaking the law mm-hmm. um, in order to stand by their convictions? Mm. How do you feel about that? What it, what like what is mm. what is your take on that? Can you give me an example? <laughs> well, see, I, you know, I guess, without yeah. getting too specific, yeah. to so I would say like. If a ruling comes out mm. that you, or if there's a law already in place mm-hmm. and you feel strongly against that, mm-hmm. you're going to break the law quietly, even, you know, people break, people do break the law on a daily basis. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> um, so there may not be like this grand 
gesture of breaking the law, but but right. you're going to break the law because you feel it stands against your convictions. Mm-hmm. Or you're going to um, you're going to say this is that's not my president. Mm. How about that? Yeah. <laughs> so so I think um, where I would fall on that is um, you know this about me. I'm very much a rule follower. So that <laughs> I mean, if if there okay. were if there were a law or a ruling, because I'm trying to think of a law or a ruling that would require me to do something that stands against my mm. Christian beliefs. Yeah. And for me, that's a big thing is, is are my convictions, what are they founded in? Okay. What are they based in? If they're based in anything other than scripture, there's an issue. Um, as disciples, yeah, right? Like absolutely. we're obviously not going to hold people who don't believe in Jesus to that. We hope that they would come to that, but... For yeah. me as a disciple, if my convictions are, if my foundation for my convictions is anything other than God's word, mm-hmm. then, then there's a, there's an idol there. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Um, and so. Then it might be the rule <clears throat> that is, that is the idol, right? Right. Yeah. Right. And so I think if there's a, a law or a ruling that is, that is requiring that I go against that, mm. then um, our beliefs would tell us that disobedience is acceptable in that yeah. situation. Now, if there is a law or a rule that is allowing something outside of my beliefs, but not requiring me to participate, mm-hmm. then that allows me to look different than society, right? And yeah. to share my beliefs through, no, I don't need to participate or be part of some of these things, yeah. right? Um, Which is, you know, to to put it in really plain language, it's, Yes, that's legal, but no, it's not. It's not helpful, right? As a right. as a Christian, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. a good way of phrasing it. Yeah, yeah, because I, I, yeah, well, it's, I, you know, and Paul kind of goes that mm-hmm. that route with uh, the Corinthians about uh, eating. Yeah, like right. yes, all things are permitted, mm-hmm. but not all things are beneficial. Right, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Uh, because the more beneficial thing for us as disciples is I, ideally mm-hmm. to proclaim the gospel. Like that's what we mm-hmm. that's what we really want to do. Yeah. Anything that stands in the way of that, well, is not it's not beneficial. Yeah. It's not beneficial to right. that mission, which which hopefully is a pretty central mission in your life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I think a hard part is often that sharing the gospel might mean we have to lay aside some conversations. Mm about personal beliefs yeah. in order to to just build a relationship. Yeah. Cuz I don't want to get in the way of the gospel. Right. Yeah. Um and I think we I mean you can think of the stereotypical ways of that as that has ha- of that how that has happened in the past. Yeah. Right? Um like Westboro Baptist Church, mm. you know, situations of the past come to mind. Um it's very difficult to share the gospel with someone who might be in need of it if we can't lay some of our own personal, um, I don't want to say convictions because we don't give up our convictions for the sake of the gospel, but we might put those as a second or third yeah. um, importance yeah. while we are building relationship with someone else and getting to know them and, and getting to understand who they are. What are their convictions? What are, what is their background what is, you know, what is their history? Where are they coming from? Yeah. Can I look at a person rather than a demographic? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Can I see my neighbor instead of, you know, whatever, whatever that, whatever right. that category is. Right. Exactly. Can I see them as, as also created by God? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, this kind of all starts to get down to, uh, and ideally I think we're thinking, this this is this episode going to be released after voting is voting day tomorrow voting day is tomorrow which okay. will be tuesday so and you're probably th- hearing this yeah. the day after um so how should we vote <laughs> right yeah and uh the question the big question that always comes to mind for me is um because i've heard it because i heard it growing growing up in in the church that i did is should churches uh encourage voters to vote a certain way. Mm, yeah. I mean, I think I think if you if you answer that question with yes and then you 
start thinking about repercussions, then you get back to what we were just talking about with history. And yeah. then you're going to see history repeating itself, right? Yeah. Um, so I think should churches encourage voting? I don't think that's a bad thing. Oh, no, not at all. Um, but... I think that's par- that's mm-hmm. probably part of our our vocation. Yeah. Is hey, you're here. Right. Um do your best to vote by your conscience. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. And hopefully your conscience is grounded in the scriptures. Yes. <laughs> right. Um now as someone who's who's tried to walk that path, mm-hmm. good luck. Right. Um, right. <laughs> because uh, because you know, in our country, the there are two major political parties. Mm-hmm. Um, and you could easily go down the list of even even the topics of contention that I mentioned earlier yeah. and see, oh, if I walk with the scriptures according yeah. to my conscience, yeah. um, split almost right down the middle mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. About, yeah. about this or that or this or that. And, and it can be difficult figuring out which way to go, yeah. which I think is prayerful consideration. Yeah. 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 And maybe maybe that's the answer to that question is how should I vote? Start with prayer. Yeah. Start with prayer. You should absolutely pray. Do some research. Um, end with prayer. Yeah. Pray, right. Pray with your research. Pray pray when you're approaching that that booth. Mm-hmm. Pray afterwards mm-hmm. for for God's will to be done. Mm-hmm. Um, and then trust that it is going to be done. Yeah. Yeah. That that whoever those leaders are. Mm-hmm. That's who God has allowed to be there. Yeah. Um, whether they're a good leader or not, right. in your mind, I think we trust that. Yeah. That God's will is always going to happen. And I and I think um, that makes me think of the Old Testament a little bit. Mm. Um, in some of the people that God allowed to become leaders over His people, they were bad. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. there was purpose in that, yeah. right? Yeah. There was purpose. And so for us, I think that's really helpful for us to remember is Uh that our prayer doesn't mean that the person we want is going to become and get, you know, get into whatever office it is that we're hoping and then things are going to get turned around. Yeah. No, it may be that whoever goes to office that God allows to be in that office, it's, it's a, it could be bad, but there, God has a purpose in that. Right. Yeah. And and I think we see you see this with the Israelites. Sometimes they have to hit rock bottom yes. <laughs> before they're able to yeah. realize, oh yeah. <laughs> God really was calling us to him all this time. And I say that jokingly, but I know that I'm no better than they uh-huh. are. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Um and so so I think that's good perspective for us yeah. for us to remember. Definitely. Um is that there are times when when God allows a bad leader or a narcissistic leader or a selfish leader into a position, um, maybe because he's tried all the nice ways of getting our attention like <laughs> yeah. he did with the yeah. Israelites, right? Yeah. And that's not to say that that, that leader is necessarily even a good, right? <laughs> like a good, faithful, God fearing right. leader. That's right. to say, no, that God's will is going to be done yes. through whoever yep. takes that role. Yeah. And that, that also comes down to, I think even legal decisions. Yeah. Um, when you hear that come across, it is not the time to lose hope, but to turn to yeah. hope in Christ. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and I don't just mean that like turn to hoping in the end times. I mean, no, hope that, that God will work through this. Yeah, absolutely. That the gospel is still going to be proclaimed. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we, we just continue on. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. So what, what scripture, uh, you, you had the scripture for today. I did. Um, let's leave them with that hope. Let's leave them with some hope. So this comes from Romans 13 verse 1. It says, let every person be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and those that exist have been instituted by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authorities resists what God has appointed, and those who resist will incur judgment. For rulers are not a terror to good conduct, but to bad. Would you have no fear of the one who is in authority? Then do what is good, and you will receive his approval. For he is God's servant for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword in vain. 
for he is the servant of God, an avenger who carries out God's wrath on the wrongdoer. Therefore, one must be in subjugation, not only to avoid God's wrath, but also for the sake of conscience. For because of this, you also pay taxes, for the authorities are ministers of God, attending to this very thing. Pay to all what is owed to them, taxes to whom taxes are owed, revenue revenue to whom revenue is owed, respect to whom respect is owed, honor to whom honor is owed. Owe no one anything except to love each other. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> and that last verse for me Ooh. is so convicting yeah. because um, we're, we're called to pray for those in authority and we're called to love those in authority. Um, and, and that's why love from God is so powerful because it doesn't, it doesn't mean that I, um, I, I'd be curious what the actual Greek is, but I'm assuming mm. it's not phileo yeah. in this context, right? Um, I can't tell you. <laughs> phile- phileo, brotherly yeah. love. Like yeah. I'm, I'm sure God's not calling us to love someone in a brotherly way, but yeah. in this higher way, this agape kind mm. of unconditional care for someone and respect and honor for someone that God has allowed to be in authority over us. Yeah. And I think, and, and because I think people could, people could misconstrue, uh, verse seven there. It's a pay to all what is owed them. Yeah. Owed to them taxes to whom taxes are owed revenue to whom revenue is owed respect to whom respect is owed honor to whom honor is owed. It's not actually saying if they deserve it. Right. It's actually saying this is what's owed to them and it's owed to them because at the beginning of this passage, it's uh, that God has put has allowed them to be in this place of authority. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it mm-hmm. says therefore, whoever resists authorities resists what God has appointed. Yeah, and that's yeah, that's that's, re- that's really hard to think of when when mm-hmm. when we see leaders that we know are going <laughs> against our scriptural beliefs. Mm-hmm. We, we know that, I mean, this has happened with probably every president that we've ever had in right. this country. <laughs> right, right, exactly. <laughs> and it's hard, to, it's hard to hear that, but this is what the scripture tells us. Mm-hmm. So I think, mm-hmm. I think what it really is, is it's our, our opportunity to trust yeah. in God's plan. Absolutely. Rather than, you know, I could be an anarchist if... If I had, if I had my way, sometimes, but, but, but this reminds me: no, no, God has appointed this yeah. for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna trust mm-hmm. what His plan is because yeah. I've tried my own way before, and right. it doesn't work out for you. I right. Just throw that out there. Yeah. Well, and 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 God is bigger than it, right? Yes. Like God is, and that's the thing that I think helps us put some of this stuff into perspective. At least for me, um, especially when I'm just feeling so discouraged or. Um, just like, you know, where are we, we need to abandon this country and move somewhere else because it's, you know, I get really dramatic sometimes. Everybody surprise, wanted surprise. to move to Canada, you know? Oh yeah. It's too cold up back. there. Um, <laughs> anyway, so, you know, whenever, whenever I get to a point where I'm really discouraged, I have to remember, okay, the God we serve is so much bigger than yeah. the democracy of the United States, right? Yes. It's so much bigger than this this person, even the, he's so much bigger than the president of the United uh-huh. States or, you know, the governor of our state or whatever. He's so much bigger than that. And so do I trust and believe that yeah. in this moment? Um, and for me, that's convicting. And it and it's it kind of puts everything back in its proper perspective for me of like, OK, yeah. God is bigger than this. God's ways are higher than my my ways. He know he knows. And so my role is to pray for those those in authority that yes. they would if they don't know him they would come to know him or, or you know um to pray for them to pray for the decisions they have to make to pray yeah. for you know all the people influencing them and just trust that god god takes it from there yeah absolutely and that's and that's such a good reminder is you know the triune god mm-hmm. um father son and holy spirit mm-hmm. supersedes all nations yeah 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 (laughs) all nations he created all things he continues to sustain all things 
Um, and that is that is a very, very important lesson that I think we learned from the early church who battled against this idea that God created all things and left it alone mm-hmm. from the mm-hmm. from Gnosticism. Yeah. Um, God created all things. He's still working through all things. Yes. Um, and that's our faith. Yeah. 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 All right. That's all we're going to, that's all we're going to do. Let's wrap there. Yeah. Let's do <laughs> that. Stuff. See y'all next all week. Right. Bye y'all. Thanks for joining us. If you have questions or a topic that you'd like to hear us discuss, send it to info at peacechurch.org. You can find information about our services and what's happening at Peace by visiting www.peacechurch.org. Take care. And we'll see you next time.